Stress. It's a big part of everyday life, but for some animals, it can be the difference between life and death. When an animal perceives stress, it triggers the fight or flight response, which can cause it to react in unpredictable and dangerous ways. As we take up more and more space on the planet, we leave less room for wildlife, encroaching on natural habitats and stressing out animals. It has never been more important to understand the science of stress, but there is a problem. How do you tell if an animal is stressed without stressing it out? So stress is something which you find throughout the animal kingdom, including human, and it is basically an emergency response. There's something which gets an organism, an animal, a human out of its comfort zone. The body tries to get back where it belongs to, and it triggers a whole cascade of reactions and responses, which brings the animal back where it is. When an animal sees, hears, or perceives something that causes stress, both cortisol and adrenaline rush into the bloodstream. Cortisol gives a rise in blood sugar levels, which gives the animal energy, and adrenaline causes the heart to beat faster, bringing oxygen to the muscles. This means that whatever the stress, the animal is ready to fight or run away. By looking at the different chemicals in the blood, scientists like Rudy can measure the stress levels. But getting hold of that blood in the first place can be pretty stressful. Well, that's exactly that's, that's the problem. In order to get to a blood sample in the first instance, you have to actually catch the animal. You handle the animal, you stick a needle into the blood vessels to get the little blood sample. And of course, that is a stressor in itself to the animal. So it will actually affect the levels of stress hormones in the blood. And actually, you have only a window of about two or three minutes in which you have to take that blood sample from the first disturbance of the animal, otherwise you're not getting a clean signal. So it's measuring stress for an animal is actually very, very stressful. When animals respond to stress, they start to strictly focus their body temperature. They prioritize their inner core, meaning that they cool down their surface and direct this heat to their internal organs. Traditionally, thermometers were used to measure internal body temperature, but to get a reliable reading required inserting the thermometer, well, somewhere stressful. Scientists are now starting to wonder if thermal imaging cameras can be used instead. These cameras detect infrared radiation, which can be used to give temperature readings, all without touching an animal, taking a blood sample, or using a thermometer. So, if you point the camera at an animal which is just about to experience stress, what you should see is that it, its surface is cooling down. So it gets from the warm colors to the cool col colors. So you see a very neat signal of a drop in temperature and then a recovery. So for, in, if you're looking at the surface of an animal, stress is cool. Stress is pretty cool and using thermal imaging cameras is pretty cool too. But before this technique can actually start being used, it needs to be shown to be more accurate and more reliable than its predecessor, the blood sample. And that is a job for a charm of finches. Most of the day, um, there'll be very little going on in here. Um, there'll probably be the radio on and they'll be left to feed and do whatever it is that they, they, they normally do um, without interruption. But once a day, um, at a set time, we will um, record thermal images from them by running a camera up and down in, in front of the cages. What we'll be looking for is a change in eye temperature in response to chronic stress, which we'll be applying by randomizing the availability of food. Uh, which I'm sure you can empathise with, would make, it, it would stress you out, or it would be a bit of a worry, at least. Which we may then, because we'll be taking blood samples as well, uh, be able to track similar changes between the, the eye temperature and the hormone levels. Um, and if there is a relationship, then that's great. 
As the relationship between thermal imaging cameras and stress becomes clearer, this technique will become more useful. But thermal imaging cameras have other uses too. In a recent study in Antarctica, thermal imaging cameras were directed at emperor penguins. Now the temperatures in Antarctica are the coldest that any bird has to deal with, sometimes reaching below minus 60 degrees Celsius, and so the researchers were fascinated to find out what they might see. And when the images came back, they couldn't quite believe their eyes. When I looked at this data, I couldn't really believe the result that we were seeing because what we were seeing was that the surface temperature of the penguins was actually lower than the air temperature surrounding that we recorded in the, in the colony. And I checked the data many, many times, went through the analysis in different ways. But essentially what this is telling us is that the surface of the penguin was cooling down through uh, a very strong um, loss of heat by radiation to uh, the, the clear sky, uh, which, which basically chills down the surface. And because these animals are so well insulated, very little heat leaks out of the body through the through the feathers and so what you have there is a, an insulated surface that is being chilled by by rate, uh, a very high rate of radiation on the surface and that chills the surface down to below air temperature What Dominic and his team saw was that the penguin's surface temperature is actually colder than the outside air, and this had never been seen before in animals. The emperor penguins are so well insulated that they can handle seriously cold temperatures on their surface, but remain warm on the inside. And by understanding the different adaptations for dealing with the cold weather, scientists look to understand how animals might cope with temperature changes in the future. And this physical principle has been known about for some time for um, people working in, uh, uh, in agriculture. They can see that you can get really strong what we call radiative frosts on uh, fruit, for instance, where the fruit can become chilled, um, although the air temperature can be um, just above freezing. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a physical principle, but we hadn't seen this in, in animals much before. And so this was really quite an, an interesting um, and quite exciting bit of uh, data that we were able to record. Thermal imaging cameras allow scientists to collect real-time measurements from animals without causing any disturbances. This allows better insights into how animals cope with different temperatures, how they will cope with changes in the future, and how they will react to new stresses in their environment, such as lack of food, or space. These new understandings are quickly making the ultimate goal more possible, making the science of stress less stressful.